Mevartina da Mevartamila. Da es a chimani presentacia that we gave today at Batumi Shota University. Es aris chimani presentacia romelis chimens arvatigne tres Batumi Shota rustavelis rustavelis ekhemtsipo universitetsi. In this video, we're just going to give you a quick overview of the slides, the quella, uh, all the other things we showed that were very interesting after the presentation. Am presentatia shi chuen zalian mokla tsarmogit gent chuen so slide chuen slide apps romel saris zalian sa interes. Mhm. So the slides we show, we talked about collaboration. Es saris slide sa das motsamulia thalam shomloba. Mhm. The requirement to be the most common. Mhm. It's always a simple application. That's why press a simple. Mhm. Train box of several combinations. Mhm. The the most important part of the talk today was about the Link Sync architecture, which is a bunch of web services shown here in squares and user interfaces, which talk to each other. Uh, as modules, so you can see this is the architecture. Yes, that is architecture. So that's most mostly a platform. Maybe the platform. Mhm. And in this section, we looked a little bit about how corpuses work. So each user can have a corpus with some encrypted bits, and they can add other users to their corpus mm -hmm. with read-only access, read-write access. <laughs> they can also have corpuses with versions and document numbers. Which means you can undo edits. Ah, Karis Motsamuri Korbusabida, Ah, Aris Natuanevi, to Robert Mushaber, please. We have a few users. Chen works, Chen works with him on Marevel. Soon, so Pilosh are so ourselves. Atasi, Atasi linguisti. Tamatkan samasi. So many linguistics. So many and that's not very good. So S Kargia. The uh, S uh, this is one of our uh, applications uh, plugin for speech recognition for Android. S R is application or melts are not against the Salvador Gonis Kakebis system. And if you look in the links below, you can install it. The two shen shall play store shen shagizlia da install. Mm -hmm. We have showed two lexicon visualizations. The first one shows uh, prefixes, roots, and suffixes, which you can play with, and the second one shows frequency of words in your corpus, which you can also edit, um, add stemming, and do things to it. But these are just visualizations. Yes, that is interactive lexicon is visualization. And finally, our take-home message. Thank you. Uh, we needed high productivity requirements. Uh, we needed to include everyone, all stakeholders, all people, all devices, everywhere. And we needed to make. We decided the way to do this was to build modular web services and a plugin architecture, which was open source with open development and open data. That's all. So this was the presentation which we showed, and now I'm going to show you quickly some of the uh, information we shared also. Uh, so then we showed the website for LinkSync for users. Saris website And we showed also because most of the our audience were developers, the developer site where you can see everything that we've done. Developer site? Developer site? Mm -hmm. Website for developers. I know um, website developer mm -hmm. These are milestones, completed features and modules. And I'm terribly proactive. And then we looked at the Lexon browser. We showed how you can hover over each morpheme and see the meanings. You can show them in suffix format, and you can edit them and see them in context here. So this is the Lexon browser. And what else did we show? Oh yes, we had a question from the audience about how you can build multilingual dictionaries. So we showed the user interface here, where you have multiple fields. This is the app. Yes, that is application. Mm -hmm. So that's trying to with Leah. And then we showed how you can um, how you can add new fields to the app. For example, here in the example we added Kartuli, mm -hmm. and we gave uh, help conventions for Kartuli. So it's all managed in the. Mm -hmm. In the 
settings for the corpus. You could add new fields here. Mm -hmm. And then we talked a little bit about the difference between adding fields when you're doing it in a table database versus a JSON database. So we looked at uh, some of the data in the um, database itself. This is what the data looks like. It's in JSON format. This is an object instead of a column. So this is the, these are all the columns on the data and you can add new ones easily without having to change your schema. Um, after that, we looked at, what did we look at next? I think we talked a little bit about how, uh, how you can use GitHub to find new code. So we looked for examples of HTML5 games. Um, and we found many repositories which were not very exciting. So let's see, this one looks good. There's 41 commits. There's only one contributor. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like some of the pro code is recent. We can click on the contributor to see whether or not this project is active. So there was a lot of activity in the beginning and some later activity. This looks okay. Um, we had other examples which we looked at. It's showing much better results than before. Um, so we, we talked a little bit about how you can use GitHub to determine whether or not projects are interesting. So generally, the more commits is better, more contributors is better, and more forks is better. It gives you an opportunity to see if it's busy. Uh, after that, we looked a little bit about these uh, contributor statistics. So. In this example, we can see who has been contributing to the Link Sync project. And if you type git log, you can see them in another format here. And you can even grab them. So if we look here, you can grab these commits and other people who have been committing and how many. So this is one way that you can take these statistics um, and visualize it nicely on GitHub. Um, after that, we talked about other tools we had for visualizing Git. So we talked a little bit about SmartKit, which is a great program for seeing changes on code. So if I go back here to the main view, we can look at the, the tree. You can see branches in the code, um, different people interacting with the code. Sometimes you have many concurrent branches with many people working. And we showed a feature called Blame, which lets you to see line by line who changed which code. So for example, here, Teresa added this line, uh, Cecine added this line, Teresa, etc., which is also handy. This is from Emmy. And this is something that was uh, pretty useful for the students. And I think uh, that's pretty much all the tools we looked at. We looked at Sublime a little bit. We're using uh, Java Docs um, to uh, document the code, just like in Java. It's JS doc. And we also showed how you can write tests and run them using Grunt, um, like any other uh, build system for JavaScript. So there are many tools that help out when you're working on a JavaScript project.